Live from London, England, it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to London, England. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Nutanix.next 2018 Europe. My name's Stu and my co-host for this two days of coverage has been you, Piscar, and happy to welcome to the program two first-time guests. We're going to talk about culture and people. Uh, to my right is Rukmani Sivaraman, who is the Vice President of Business Operations and Chief of Staff to the CEO, and sitting next to her is Prabha Krishna, who is the Senior Vice President of People and Places, both of them with Nutanix. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right, so, uh, you know, we've been covering Nutanix for a long time. I've been to every one of the shows. Uh, I start out, I guess, you know, Deeraj talked for a long time about the three H's. You know, it was, uh, you know, humble, hungry, and honest, if I got those right. And the, more recently, it was with heart. Actually sitting not too far behind us, there's a big booth for heart. So, you know, the culture of the company uh, is, is something that, you know, is, is tied with the founders. We've watched that growth. You know, I, I've watched the company go from, you know, about 35 people to over 3,500 people. So, you know, having those core principles is something that we look at in, in companies. Uh, why, why don't we start, if, if you could both just give a quick introduction, what brought you to Nutanix and what your role is there? Sure. So I had been at Nutanix a little over 18 months, and I started out as an engineer, then went to finance and investment banking of all things, was at Goldman for almost a decade. Uh, and Nutanix is a client of Goldman's, at, back from the IPO, and I had heard great things about the company, of course, but wasn't intending to leave Goldman Sachs. Uh, but when I got introduced to Dheeraj, there was so much that was compelling about the company, uh, the disruption, the category defining, category creating kind of position that the company had, and more importantly, I think where we were going, which was just phenomenal, it was ambitious, it was bold. And I think for me, it's always been about the people. Uh, we spend a lot of time at work, and it's really important to feel that connection to the people. And that was really important, because I had to pick up and move from New York City to the Bay Area to make this move. And we can talk more about this, but to me, the people were, like I said, ambitious, but they were also grounded. And I see it you know, after being at Nutanix now, it's phenomenal how truly humble the people are and that's always been, struck me as a great combination. You want ambition and challenging problems to solve, but you also want humility and people that you can relate to. So that's really what got me to Nutanix. Please. Yeah, so um, I've actually been following Nutanix for quite a while. It's a company that addresses a space that's very underserved and has created a suite of products that's nothing short of amazing for our customers, entirely focused on our customer base. Um, but for me, the most interesting thing was it's a company that is as right-brained as it is left-brained. I've actually spent 19 years of my career in engineering and uh, made a career switch into the people side. Um, and it's one of the few companies where that fit is almost perfect. And once I met you know, our founder and our CEO, Dheeraj, you know, this became even more obvious. So I'm actually very happy to be here. I've been here for about four months now, and it's already very clearly the beginning of a very, very exciting journey. Yeah, I interesting, both of you yeah. uh, kind of making those shifts. Uh, um, Talk a little bit about that. You, know, you talk about uh, you know people from outside of Silicon Valley. Always, it's like, oh, there's the one where they have the playground and free meals and free drinks, and you know, it's like, yeah, that's because uh, you do the analysis, and if they'll work 18 hours a day, if we can keep them there, maybe we even put a cot in the office. Uh, that, that that's good. I haven't seen cots in the office no. uh, when, no. when when I go to Nutanix. No. Yeah. They are really nice offices, yes. um, and even on the East Coast, we're we're, we're tartan to, to to change and see some of some of those things there. But maybe give us a little bit. Of insight as to, to that culture and you know Nutanix is much more than just Silicon Valley based now. That's right, so we are truly a global organization and we decided very early on that we wanted to be a global organization but we're also thinking local, right? So we do have multiple offices within the US, in Durham, in Seattle and other places but we're also truly global, you know, our Bangalore office, um, you know, in, in EMEA we have a big presence and so for us what that means is, you know, there's people from different perspectives and backgrounds but ultimately it's our sort of, like you said, the four values values, but also our culture principles that we've codified fairly recently that bind us and that really help us move forward in the same direction and pointing that same direction and going, growing the same, uh, you know, going the same way. So that has been uh, phenomenal to see and it's one that I think we've uh, very deliberately codified more recently. It's sort of the how. How do we behave that embodies those four values that you talked about? So Prabha, so you're a new hire, right? You yes. haven't been with Nutanix as much. So while we're talking on the subject, right? So What's your experience, your personal experience coming into Nutanix? 
you know, is it true what, what you're talking about? How does it, you know, work in real life, in practice? No, absolutely. So, you know, all companies state a culture, right? All companies, I think, are, are in this day and age at least, and definitely in Silicon Valley, are very clear about having a specific culture. But the key, as far as I'm concerned, and the strength of a company is how they live and breathe their culture every single day, in every decision, in every action, right? In every sort of difficult balance that they need to meet. That's where the culture really shows up. And at Nutanix, it's, it is, how shall I put it, it's really the core of every single thing we do. It's the core of how we interact, it's the core of how we grow, it's the core of how we recruit, how we define our organizations. And uh, frankly, I have to say I have been in a lot of organizations and a lot of organizations over time actually and particularly as they reach our size you know we're a bit at uh, sort of at an inflection point if you will in terms of size right our growth is definitely been very very quick and continues to accelerate um, having that culture being something that we really live is the most important thing and it's it is what will allow us to continue to innovate and continue to succeed all over the globe as Rukmini just explained right um, so that's uh, for me, it's really it's it's quite extraordinary to see it in action. Yeah, that's really interesting because you know one, I mean, our industry has some challenges hiring. Uh, yes. You know, it's finding the right skill set there. If you match that with the culture, um, you know, what challenges are there there? Um, you know, what do you, what are you looking for? What is the fit from the outside uh, to, to 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 match what you're looking for? Yeah, I'm happy to address that a little bit. Um, so recruiting for us is everything, right? We want to bring in the best, we want to bring in the brightest, and we want to bring in folks who really value our culture and our values, who really understand them, and again, are willing to live them every single day, right? Um, so we do look for great talent all over the planet, because great talent exists all over the planet, right? This is absolutely fundamental to our growth. Um, we are an infrastructure company, right? Um, and we offer actually very um, interesting work for anyone who is interested in the engineering side, who is interested in the sales side, who's interested in marketing. Um, and for me, the most interesting part in the roles we have, and fr frankly, the most unusual piece, if you will, is we offer opportunities for people to build things from scratch. So the creative side, the creative mind, is really what we encourage. It's, and it shows up in every single aspect of the way we're structured. So, uh, you know, the diversity of thought, the diversity of background, the diversity of, you know, whether it's gender, location, you know, philosophies and all of that is really what we want to bring in and what will allow us to continue to create these products that are quite unique. So. If I may add to that, we, you know, we talk internally a lot about the founder's mentality. It's um, a concept, a framework that was developed by Bain and Company. And the gist of it is as follows, right? When you think about great disruptive startups, they're on this rocket ship accelerating growth. And then they get to a certain size and they become a little bigger and they get to enjoy the benefits of scale, right? economies of scale, and that's a good thing. But the best companies take that and they enjoy those benefits, but they then also don't lose what got them there in the first place, which is the, you know, the, the, dis the innovation, the ability to disrupt and look around corners and all of that. So we want the best of both worlds. And in this framework, it's called a scaled insurgent. So you're scaled, but you're still an insurgency. And that is important to us, right? Folks that can sort of balance the two, really make you know, make you know, make sure that we are benefiting from one, but also not losing sight of the other. And it's a paradox in many ways. And we believe in embracing those paradoxes. And folks who can sort of balance those two uh, would be really a great fit. And so, you know, if you're growing that fast, I can imagine that keeping the balance between culture and engineering, and you're growing, that's difficult. How does Nutanix handle that that you know paradox? Mm -hmm. I think it goes back to what Prabha was saying. For us, it's like oxygen. You know, culture and the way we behave is like oxygen, right? So it almost like fuels the fire, as opposed to the, you know the other way around, or sort of having to do two things at once. And that's how we've thought about it. And the principles, when we thought about them and conceived them, it was the same idea. Which is how can this just be the way we conduct ourselves? We treat our customers. We treat each other. We treat our partners. How can it just become the way we do business? And uh, so far, that's worked well for us. So one of my favorite culture principles actually is get comfortable being uncomfortable. And there's a real reason for that because um, 
given our scale, given the way we want to grow, and given the fact that we want to preserve that innovative seed at every step, right? For us, every single day is about balancing, you know, opposing forces. Do we invest in the short term? Do we invest in the long term? Do we manage locally? Do we manage more globally, right? Do we centralize things? Do we not? Do we distribute, right? Every single day is about balancing those kinds of things. And, and it's that balance that encourages the creativity in every single one of us. So the very fact that we've sort of embodied that in a culture principle, you know, really sort of is a very strong in indication of what we look for and what we want to be. All right, uh, with, with the time we have left, I wonder if you could talk about both at the show and beyond the show, what things Nutanix is doing, uh, think tech for good, think about the charitable things, uh, you know, some of the speakers I've seen at these shows, you know, Mick Ebling is one that stood out from, from a previous show, uh, talking about tech for good. Dr. Jane Goodall, who I know spoke at a women's lunch event and in the keynote here today, is, you know, just so inspiring as, you know, someone that loves science oh, and absolutely. animals. It was, uh, it was very, very powerful. You've got the Dot Heart initiatives here. Uh, maybe help for those that don't know here and what else you're doing kind of around the globe around the year. Did you want to go first? Yeah, so giving back is very important for us. It's very fundamental. I mean, you know, gratitude, understanding, you know, where we all came from, where we are and where we want to go and not losing ourselves, right? That's really the key of, uh, of I think, any type of success, frankly. So we have an organization around that. It's a very active organization. We all participate and the company is very much involved in um, as many different types of charities as, uh, as possible. Um, it also feeds into the kind kinds of, uh, of sourcing that we do when we bring people in. We look for folks who care. We care very much about our people. The amount of attention and the amount of just knowledge and thought that goes into structuring our organization is very much reflective of that sense of, of giving back and, and gratitude as well, right? Our employees are everything, and the folks around us who are in need are also everything. It sort of goes together, if you will. So that's basically to us, that's a, it's, a, it's a hugely, hugely important effort, and, and we'll continue investing in those kinds of things as we go forward. Mm. I think the one thing I would add is, um, uh, as you saw at the end of the, at the session, at the closing keynote, I think we, uh, we announced or shared that thanks to everyone here really, all the folks here, our customers, partners, all of our participants, we were able to collect over 10,000 pounds for Dot Heart. And that is phenomenal, and we're forever grateful to our community to be able to do things like that. We also partner with organizations like Girls in Tech, right, which is doing great work on making sure that we are bringing all kinds of talent, as Prabha said, uh, to the table. Right? And we, we believe there's great people everywhere, and so how do we harness the power of all of those uh, initiatives. All right, so those are some great examples, and uh, probably to your point, I think that that individual touch to your employees, that, that also translates to the customers. Something I hear from Nutanix customers is, despite the fact how large you're, you, you've grown and how, how many customers you have, they, they feel that they, they get that individual attention. So thank you so much for sharing all of the updates. Wish you both the best of luck uh, in, in, in your continued journey. And we want to thank our community, of course, for tuning in to our coverage. It is truly our pleasure uh, to help document what's happening on the industry, hopefully be a surrogate for you to ask the questions that you want to hear uh, and help you along your journeys. Uh, my name is Stu Miniman. My, my co-host, my first European co-host who also did a segment in Dutch, uh, Joop Piskar. Can you say goodbye in Dutch for us, Joop? Tot de volgende keer. All right, uh, I, I, I'll have to learn that one uh, <laughs> sometime because uh, un unfortunately um, my English and sp speaking numbers in a couple of different languages is, is where I'm a little bit limited. But uh, once again, thanks for watching. Turn to thecube.net to catch all of the replays from this show as well as all the shows we will be at, including next year Nutanix will be at uh, Anaheim uh, in the spring and Copenhagen in the fall. And our team looks forward to bringing you coverage from both of those. So once again, thank you for watching The Cube. Thank you. Hi, I'm John Walls. I've been with theCUBE for a couple years, serving as a host here on our broadcast, our flagship broadcast on SiliconANGLE TV. I like to think about the hows and the whys and the whats of technology. How's it work? Why does it matter? What is it doing for end users? When I think about what theCUBE does and what it means, uh, to me it's an 